You're sitting here at the National Press Club surrounded by journalists. Do you believe you've set a dangerous precedent in secretly suing Gawker in connection with its publication of the Hulk Hogan video? I don't, I don't think so. You know, you know, you, you st let's start with uh, the, you know, the facts of the case. It involved a sex tape. You know, if, if, you, if you make a sex tape of someone with their permission, you are a pornographer. If you make a sex tape without their permission, we were told now, you are a journalist. I, I would submit that as an insult to all journalists. This is not about the First Amendment. It's, uh, it is about the most egregious violation of, um, of privacy imaginable, publishing a sex tape surreptitiously filmed in the privacy of someone's bedroom. Um, and, uh, and to hide behind the First Amendment, behind uh, 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 journalism, that is an insult. That is an insult to journalists. You know, I believe uh, journalists are a privileged group in our society. They play an important uh, role in, in um, getting us information in, in the, our system of checks and balances. Um, uh, but uh, but these were not these were not journalists. Well, do you think what happened to Gawker could happen to other news publications? I mean. Could wealthy, powerful people uh, seek revenge against a news organization um, because of something they didn't like and use their influence and money to, to take them out? You know, um, they shouldn't, uh, wealthy people shouldn't do that. I, I think if they try, they won't succeed. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, the, the, you know, Gawker was, it was a pretty flimsy business. It was, it was a bad business. It didn't make that much money. But uh, they could have withstood all the lawsuits. Um, you know, they lost because the, the, of an enormous verdict that came in against them. Are you engaged in any other lawsuits against news organizations? Uh, and, and not, not, not uh, I've you know, been involved in, in the Gawker case, nothing else. And, and part, of, you know, part of my thought was, again, they were a singularly, they were a singularly uh, um, uh, sociopathic uh, bully. Um, it was, uh, it, it, my, my view is that other journalists, other media organizations, we're not remotely in the same ballpark. Tell us how you got involved, and especially how uh, and when you got connected to uh, Charles Hardner, Hulk Hogan's lawyer in the Gawker case, and why you did this you know, secretly. It was one of these things where, as you got involved, you, you came to believe in the justice of the case more and more, because there were so many different people um, uh, that uh, you interacted with who had been destroyed. You know, in many cases, in most cases, it was, it was, not, um, it was not super prominent people. It was, uh, or super wealthy people. It was people who couldn't afford to do anything, you know. And uh, and one of the striking things is that if you're, you know, if you're middle class, if you're upper middle class, if you're a single digit millionaire like Hulk Hogan, you have no effective access to our legal system. It costs too much. This was the modus operandi of of uh, Gawker in large part. It was to go after people who had no chance of of, of fighting back. You know, uh, we we can debate about whether. Uh, the more appropriate thing for me would have been to be transparent about, about funding it uh, all the way through. But uh, my judgment was that, uh, that uh, Mr. Hogan deserved to have his day in court and that that would have distracted from, from his day in court. You know, he, um, that, that transparency in that would have turned it into, into this, uh, this very different narrative, into the Gawker narrative that it's the billionaire trying to, um, to, uh, to squash the First Amendment, rather than what, what I think it, it was actually about, which was you know, an egregious violation of privacy, the publication of a sex tape. You've had a feud with Gawker for more than a decade, as I said in my introduction. Uh, when did you decide that funding another person's lawsuit would be the best course of action to take down Gawker? And when did you set this in motion? My initial view was that uh, what you were supposed to do was you were supposed to take your beatings, um, crouch down, go into a fetal position, and then hope they moved on to somebody else. And, uh, and sort of around 20, 2011, one of my friends convinced me that, uh, that if, uh, if Gawker could get away with this sort of sociopathic repeat behavior over and over, it was this tragedy of the commons. Nobody, um, nobody would ever, um, you know, they would, they would continue to ruin lives one after another. Um, and there were many people that did things to far worse than me. And, uh, and so, you know, I was convinced that if I didn't do something, nobody would.